Hello, welcome to Study the Word. My name is Chuck Bartlett. I'm the minister for the River Ridge Church of Christ that meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh, two miles east of Castle High School. Folks, we extend a warm invitation for you to come and assemble with us. You can go to our website to check out our location, if you're not familiar with the area, and our times of services. It's at www.riverridgechurch.org. And of course, if you can't come out and be with us, maybe because of the distance, uh, maybe it conflicts with other engagements, listen, you can check us out on the internet. You can watch our services live. Um, and if you don't watch us live, you can still watch us anytime you have time because all the Bible studies and the sermons, they're saved in the archives. So you can check that out on our website also. In just a few moments, we're going to be dealing with some Bible questions, and so we hope you'll stay tuned for the next half hour. And if you'd like to participate in this program, we'd love to hear from you. Man, we hear from you folks all the time. Whether Bible questions or requesting uh, free Bible study material, or even copies of our TV program we save on DVD. None of the things that we offer cost you anything. So we'd love to hear from you. So remember that phone number, especially as we study today, because it might stir up some questions or some interest. Maybe you'd like to take advantage of some of our free offers. You'll notice them at the bottom of your screen, and I'll also mention them at the end of our program. But we need to get into our Bible study today. Now, things are going to be a little different today, especially for those who have been watching us for years. We always deal with a Bible question and a Bible answer. Well, we're going to do that today, but I'm going to be answering for you. Reason being is today I'm asking you the question. And you might say, well, Chuck, if you're asking me the question, you're not hearing my response. Well, that's true. But you'll understand what the kind of questions that I'm asking that we're going to provide you with the proper response. So in other words, if you're interested in truth, here's how you will answer the question. But as we go to the Bible, perhaps maybe you would answer it incorrectly and you'll learn some things today. So let me just go ahead and show you or demonstrate what we're going to be talking about today by presenting a question to you from the start. Number one, are you interested in following what Jesus had to say? Now that might seem rather obvious to most of you, if not all of you, because if you watch this program and you're interested in what the Bible has to say, then I would assume that you're interested in what Jesus had to say and you want to follow him. But unfortunately, folks, lots of people say that, yes, I'm interested in following Jesus. I'm interested in what he has to say. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't demonstrate that. I mean, if you don't follow it up with action, then it really doesn't mean anything. Because if people are really interested in what Jesus had to say, then you'll listen to him. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not listening to Jesus. They're listening to their church and what they say about Jesus, rather than just listening to Jesus. And for example, let me give you a classic example of this. In Matthew chapter 23, I encourage you to open up your Bibles and read it. There it is. It's not, it's not hard to find. It's one of the first books. Well, it's the first books of the New Testament. And it's called the Gospel according to Matthew. And just turn over to the 23rd chapter. You'll read these words as I will. Now listen to this as, as Jesus describes people here. And he's wanting them to listen to what he has to say, but unfortunately... These religious leaders and their followers are not listening to him. Now, let me pick it up in verse... Well, why don't I start at the beginning? So look at verse 1. It says, Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. 
but all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places in the feasts and the best seats in the synagogues. Greeting in the marketplaces and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But you do not be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father who is in heaven. Do, do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, get back to this. Do you want to listen to Jesus? Do you want to follow Jesus? Will you, will, will you listen to his words? People say, well, yeah, Chuck, I want to listen to his words. I want to obey him. Then why would you lower yourself and not recognize the equality that you have with other people? We're finding here that people want to be elevated in the religious realm. Now, people can be sincere, but they can be sincerely wrong. But there are people who are elevated by other people in the religious realm. I mean, just today, just today, somebody called me up on the phone and said, is, 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 am I talking to the pastor? And I said, well, you're talking to Chuck, and I'm the preacher for the River Ridge Church of Christ. And he goes, oh, well, well I'm pastor so-and-so. Listen, let me tell you something. You need to follow this. Listen to what Jesus had to say here. Because what Jesus doesn't want us to do is to elevate, elevate ourselves and to wear titles. Did you, were you picking up on that? I mean, that's what he was talking about. Don't call anybody your father. You know, you know, rabbi, and as he talked about here, teacher. And as far as, you know, as far as wearing it as a title, you can be designated as such, but you're not going to wear it as a title to elevate yourself because he is the one who mentioned in here that the, the equality that exists with people. That's what he wants. He, that's what he said in verse 8. Do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. If you want to be a Christian, and you are a part of God's family, there's equality within the church. And that's what he talked about over in Galatians chapter 3. Maybe you don't want the equality. Maybe you like the idea of elevating some people. Well, I'm just going to tell you that's just wrong. And when I ask you the question, do you want to follow Jesus, you're going to have to say, no. I like to believe in Jesus, and I like to read his words, but I'm not going to do what he says. Okay, so that would be a proper answer if you're not going to abide with what he's talking about here. In Galatians chapter 3, he mentions, beginning in verse 26, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you that were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. You're all one in Christ Jesus. You see, I may be the preacher from where, where I'm preaching, but I'm not preacher Chuck, I'm Chuck who preaches. And it's not my church, and I don't call the shots. Who's the head of the church? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus better be the head of the church. Because, you know, with Jesus being the head of the church and him have all the, all the authority, which, by the way, is Matthew 28 and verse 18, Jesus has all the authority. Now, if he has all the authority, how much authority do I have? None. How much authority does the church have? None. And I'm a part of the church. I'm just a member, right? I'm not the church. I'm a member of the church. The church doesn't have any authority. Christ has it all. And yet, people today say, you know, I want to follow Jesus. No, no, what's happening, and you need to answer yourself honestly, have you given your allegiance to the church rather than to Christ? You know, because we have so many people today in the religious area that belong to all sorts of religious organizations, all kinds of denominations, and they say, you know what, I'm going to heaven because I love Jesus, and I, and I, and I read what he says, and I do what he says. No, you're not. No, no, you're not. I'm just, I'm just telling you. And the reason why 
is because you're not doing what Jesus says. See, in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, Jesus said, I am going to build my church. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28 said he purchased it with his own blood. In Acts chapter 2 and in verse 47, those people who obeyed the gospel, those are people who become Christians who are born again, Jesus automatically adds them to his church. Now let me ask you this. What church would that be? Some man-made organization? You say, well, it's like it really doesn't matter what church I belong to. Wait a minute. I thought you answered, if you did, that I want to follow Jesus. I want to listen to his words and do what he says. Well, if that's the case, you're not going to give allegiance to a church. You're not going to do what they say. You're not going to elevate the preacher and call him pastor so-and-so. Excuse me. He might want that, but that's unlawful. You say, well, I'm just doing it out of respect. It doesn't matter if you're doing it out of respect. Folks, now listen, I want you to understand something. I'm not angry. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you today to take hold today to take hold of your Bible and be true to yourself, be true to our Lord, and be honest. And ask yourself, have you given your allegiance to Christ or to the church? Because people are going to places where they're teaching things that are wrong, but yet they continue to go there. And they do things that are unauthorized within the scriptures. Now, in Romans chapter 16 and verse 16, when Paul, the apostle, had traveled around, and you can read the second half of the book of Acts, you can see where Paul went on three missionary journeys. And when he traveled around, he would go wherever there were religious people gathered. And so he would actually go into the synagogue. That's where the, the Jews were meeting. They were caught up in Judaism, but, but Paul would go in there with, with Christianity. He would go in there and preach the gospel to them, preach Jesus to them. So he would go into the synagogue. Whenever he went into the city, that was his pattern. That's where he would go. And you can read in the book of Acts where he would go from city to city to city. Sometimes they liked what he said. Other times they ran him out of town. They would stone him and they would, they would try to kill him. Now when Paul traveled around from city to city, some people who obeyed the gospel, churches were established. And Paul would travel around and strengthen those churches in those cities. Now the reason I bring that up is because when Paul traveled around, you know, he would write letters. You know, he wrote Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, the Thessalonian letters. You know, Paul wrote a lot of letters. Well, where did he write them from? Well, he was, sometimes he was in, in, in prison somewhere, and he would pen letters, and, and, they, and they have them delivered to, to congregations. But the interesting thing is, when he wrote the book of Romans, he wanted to send greetings on behalf of the other churches that he has had visited, and those churches wanted to send greetings to the Roman brethren. And so what you had in Romans six, uh, Romans chapter 16 and verse 16, Paul said, the churches of Christ salute you or greet you. We would say, they say hi or they send their best. The churches of Christ. Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. I want to ask you something. Again, I've been doing a lot of that in this program. Because I'm asking the questions today. And the question is, do you belong to Christ's church? The church of, the word of means belonging to. The church of Christ. Or is it a man-made organization? You say, Chuck, my allegiance is to Christ. I want to become a Christian. I want to be Christ-like. And Peter talked about that in 1 Peter chapter 2. You know, he set an example for us, and we need to, to be like him. We put on Christ in baptism. That was Romans chapter 6. We became a Christian then. You know, we, 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 we put on Christ. We put off the old man, and we put on the new man. See, a lot of religious groups out there will teach that you become a Christian, and then you get baptized. That's false doctrine, and people that do that have given their allegiance to the church and the church's doctrine rather than to Christ and Christ's doctrine. See, there's a difference. Second John 9 tells us that we need to abide in the doctrine of Christ. And that's why you can stand up, and I've done 
programs on that. Can you stand against churches that are teaching false doctrine? Yes. Because the word church just means the called out. So we're talking about the people. People do not make the doctrines of Christ. Christ does. And he provided that message. That's why we're told to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And Peter mentioned, if any man speak, let him speak by the oracles of God, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. We need to have authority for everything that we do, Colossians 3.17. People want to talk about Jesus. They want to say how much they love Jesus. And they'll do that. But they'll omit other things that Jesus taught specifically that we talked about in Matthew chapter 23. Now you go through Matthew chapter 23. There's a lot of other things that were mentioned in that chapter that people are continuing to be guilty of today. Not only this idea of elevating the religious leaders of that day, <clears throat> but he talks about how that people will emphasize certain laws and omit other laws. And that's what he talked about in verse 23, for example. He said, I mean, Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise of cumin, and have neglected the way to your matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Now remember, at this time, Matthew 23, Jesus is still alive. He's still living under the old law. It wasn't until he died that he brought in the gospel and did away with the old law. Colossians 2.14. He nailed it to the cross. But that, that, it, that might help you to understand what is this idea that they paid mint and anise and cumin. Well, those were things that they would do under the old law. But I want you to understand is that Jesus didn't say what you did was wrong. What he said was you neglected these things. That was wrong. And so he wasn't saying that you should have emphasized these things and forget those other things. No, Jesus didn't say that. He told them you're emphasizing these, but you're not emphasizing these. You should emphasize all of them, is his point. And what's happening today in the religious realm is people want to emphasize things without talking about all the oracles of God. We need to preach everything. When Jesus said, go preach the gospel, he didn't mean just preach parts of it. He meant to preach all of it. And this is why I'm challenging you. Do you want to hear all of it? Or have you become like the people Paul warned about over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Again, I'm asking you that question. I'm putting you on the spot. Does this describe you? Now, Paul is going to tell Timothy, he's going to warn them. Paul's going to tell this young evangelist, here's what I want you to do. But I want you to ask yourself if you're like the people that Paul warned Timothy about. So listen, 2 Timothy 4, verse 2. He told Timothy, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. And why did he tell him to do that? Other than the fact that that's what the Lord wants him to do. But here's other reasons. Look at verse 3. He said, for the time will come when they, the people you're preaching to, they will not endure sound doctrine. That means they had been enduring it. So he's talking to Christians. Paul is telling Timothy, the members of the church, the Christians that you're preaching to, he said, I want you to preach that word and preach it when they like it and when they don't like it, when it's popular and when it's unpopular. Well, why, Paul? Because there'll come a time when they, okay, will not endure sound doctrine. They're going to leave it. Well, let's go on. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So, Paul's telling Timothy, they'll come a, there, there's going to come a time, Timothy, when they're going to get you out of the pulpit, so to speak. They're going to get you away from them, and they're going to bring other teachers in. They'll preach to them what they want to hear. It'll, it'll tickle their ears. They have itching ears. Please tell us what we want to hear, not what we need to hear. And you need to ask yourself, are you the kind of person that says, you know what, tell me what I need to hear, just don't tell me what I want to hear. And the reason why we have all the denominations of our day 
and I've said this on other programs, is the same reason we have so many different restaurants. Not everybody feels like eating Mexican food every day. Not everybody wants to have chicken. Not everybody wants to have hamburgers or pizza. There, it, it's called supply and demand. And so people will open up a franchise and people are attracted to it, but they don't all go to that one place. And so somebody will say, well, let me create, let me try an Italian place. I'll have a little niche there. Or maybe I'll have some German food over here and that'll attract some people too. It's supply and demand. And so you could start your own religious group with your little uh, quirks and your unique teachings, and I guarantee you, you'll have people that'll follow it. Because people are always like looking for something new or something different. They have itching ears and they'll check you out and they'll say, I want to see if they're, they're going to make me feel good over here. And so you'll have some success. But here's my point. The original question was today, do you like to follow Jesus? Do you listen to him? Do you do exactly what he says? Now there's a false notion out there that people say, Jesus doesn't care too much about what you do because he knows your heart. Well, I got news for you. When you're sinning, he knows your heart. Yes. But just because he knows your heart doesn't mean everything's okay. Ignorance is not bliss. You cannot sit back and say that, well, I didn't know it was wrong, or he knows I had the best of intentions. That doesn't cut it. Throughout biblical history, people who had the best of intentions didn't cut it. Cain offered a sacrifice that God rejected. Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus chapter 10, they're, they're offering the, the, using strange fire. They were consumed from God. It was unacceptable. John 4.24 tells us, that we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. We need to do it according to His Word. This program, yes, it stresses book, chapter, and verse. Should our heart be in it? Of course. You can go through the motions and it, and it be vain worship. It can be empty, useless. Your heart needs to be in it, such as giving. You need to give cheerfully. You need to sing with the understanding. Your prayers need not be vain repetition. But you need to sing. You need to pray. Right? We, we need to worship God. We don't want it to be in vain. But we do emphasize authority for everything that we do. Now, a majority of the religious people today do not care so much for authority because they're just saying, I love Jesus. Well, it's great that you love Him. But remember what Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And so I'm challenging you folks to challenge the people where you're attending with, are you abiding in the doctrine of Christ? Is Christ anywhere to be found? You can talk about him, but remember, he's the head of the church. And everything that is done needs to be done with his authority. And so when you attend where we're at, you can come and sit and observe. You can actually watch us on the internet. And you could see what we're doing in worship. And you could email me. You can call me whatever it might be, text me and ask, why did you guys do this? I saw that you guys did this in worship, or you did this, or you didn't do something. Why? And we should be able to come back and tell you, well, here's what Jesus authorized, and that's why we're doing what we do. The name of the church, it's His. He purchased it. It belongs to Him. The equality within the family of God. No, I'm not... I'm not a pastor. Pastor is just another word for, for elder. And there was always two or more within the congregation, but those were not titles. When Paul traveled through in Acts chapter 20 and he wanted to talk to the, the church, some of the, the leaders within the congregation, he sent for the elders. He said, well, why didn't he ask for the pastor? Doesn't he lead things up there? The elders are the pastors. It's just another word. You could use the word bishop overseer, shepherd, presbyter, they all mean the same thing. And you have to meet the qualifications to be an elder or pastor, shepherd. And they're found in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus chapter 1. Folks, I want you to reach out for help in learning the Word of God. We offer so many things. Number one, a six-lesson Bible study course. People do it in the comfort of their own home and work at it at their own speed. That's one option. Two, 
you can call me up and say, Chuck, I'd like a face-to-face -face Bible study. I have a class tomorrow night. Um, there's four people that invited me in. We, sit, we literally sit around the kitchen table, and it is a round table. We open up our Bibles, and we study. Is that something you'd be interested in? You say, well, Chuck, I don't want you to come to my house, and I'm not comfortable going to your place. I don't want to go to the church building. Can we meet somewhere else? Yes. This morning, I met with a gentleman in the library. I'm going to meet with a gentleman tomorrow, a different man, in a different library in Evansville. And so, we'll meet with you, and if you say, Chuck, I'm, I, I'd like to have a class, can I bring some friends? Absolutely. We just open up our Bibles and study. If that's of interest to you, let me know. Come into our services. You can enroll in our free home, uh, not, the, not only the, the correspondence course, but we offer a weekly bulletin. We can mail that up to you. It's like a sermon on paper. We can, And there's no cost for that. And please don't forget that we um, tape our programs and we keep them on DVD. And if you ever want a copy of one, we can send it to you. Of course, you need a DVD player. And we'll go ahead and do that. Please don't forget, uh, every Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock, we have a live radio program. This TV program is taped ahead of time. But the radio program is live. And it's every Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock on 98.5 FM. And you can call in and uh, have any of your questions answered right away. And so we'd love to hear from you. And your questions, that they mean a lot to us. Um, you can call up or send them in anonymously. and We'll use them over, uh, over the air. We'll use them on this program and sometimes we even use them on the radio program. But you can email us. Now here's the email. It's study the word, all one word, study the word at wowway.com. And you can email us your question or you know, you can email us the request for the correspondence course or the bulletin or, or a copy of our program here. Uh, whatever your desire might be, or even that face-to-face -face Bible study, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Now folks, the Church of Christ that meets at 5600 Van Road in Newburgh, out by the ball field, if you're familiar with the area, we meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and we have a Bible study. Now, I teach the adult class, but if you have children, bring them because we have classes for them too. And they have a Bible class for about 45 minutes. And then we have a 15-minute break and we get ready for a worship service that starts at 10 and everybody gathers in the main auditorium and we worship God. And so we encourage you to come and be with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for Bible study, 10 o'clock for worship, and then we assemble in the afternoon at, at 4 and Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. You'd be our honored guest. Come, check us out. We'd love to have you. Well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day of studying the scriptures. I hope you didn't mind me asking you questions today. And Lord willing, next time we'll come together and we will open up our Bibles and we'll provide another answer for a question that has come our way. Thank you and have yourselves a great day.